I know, I know. I wasn't around to introduce the last episode. Why do you ask? To be frank, my clairvoyance is powerful, but I'm not completely omniscient. You see, distant galaxies are out of range for my abilities. Those losers traveling through space are on their own. I know, I'm flawed. Deal with it! Anyway, previously on Second Fiddles, my son Linus moved in with Tammy and Max. After a week of cohabitating, how are things going? I can tell you this, Linus has never cleaned a day in his life. I know, so much privilege, right? You're just jealous of my success. I'm not jealous of Max, though. I know my son, and he's a handful. Buck up, little buck. I would say that it gets better, but we all know that's not true. All right, let's begin. Episode 21, Journal. Linus, are you here? I'm going to the gym, Maxie. See you in a bit. No, wait. I need you to pick me up some food while you're out. You're gone. Don't call me Maxie. Fine. Not going to listen. I'll just call you instead. Hey, this is Linus. I no longer work as a nude model for drawing classes, so if you're calling me about that, leave me alone. If you're like my friend or whatever, just send me a text. Hey, Rumi, I'm like 99% sure you ate all of my food, and as I can't just walk outside looking like this, I was hoping you could stop by Rosie Market on the way back from the gym. I'm really craving some vegetarian nuggets. Oh, and sugar snap peas. And potato chips, but the ones with ridges. Flat ones are stupid. And bananas. Okay, I think that's everything. Wait, do rich people even know how to buy groceries? Ugh. Thanks for nothing. Oh, sorry, Eloise, I forgot you were here. Okay, so if you were a human and you wanted to hoard someone's snacks, where would you hide them? No, I'm talking about human snacks. No, I don't have any mice or pigeons for you to eat. Hey, I left the window open if you want to go hunt. Okay, fine, you can stay. But please don't poop on the carpet. Eloise, did you see Linus take any of my protein bars? The snickerdoodle ones? The wrapper is blue. No? Yesterday, Timmy brought them back for me, and there's no way he ate them all in one afternoon. Yeah, you're right. I should just go look for them myself. They're probably on the nightstand or something. Tam won't care if I go into her room. She knows I won't go through her things since the incident with the vibrator drawer. I mean, who knew they came with attachments? No, I'm not explaining to you what a vibrator is. Falcons have different parts as humans, so you wouldn't get it. Okay, if I was a box of protein bars, where would I be? Oh my god, you slobs. Pick up your clothes every once in a while. You have a hamper for a reason. Ew, why is this sticky? Oh god. Okay, so if it's not in an obvious spot, maybe it's in one of your bags? Aha! Snickerdoodle bars, you have returned to me! Okay, well there's only one left, but it's better than nothing. Hmm, what have we here? Hey, Eloise! I think Linus keeps a journal! What's that? You... you don't give a sh? Well, who asked you? Okay. What does someone like Linus Montgomery write in a journal? Okay, let's jump back a bit. <clears throat> Today was not a great day. I was supposed to have an audition to Psychic for Amalgamation Man. I was nervous, but excited. Before I even got dressed, I got a call from the A-League telling me I was no longer in the running. I know Dad had something to do with it. I won't be his psychic, so he's ruining my chances to work for anyone else. I don't know why he treats me this way. 
He'll do literally anything for Sally, including murdering innocent people in cold blood, but he won't even let me have the opportunity to try and experience the world. He treats me like a bubble boy, which I know was always my backup sidekick name, but this time it feels different. I ran over to his wing of the house and I called him out on it, but he just laughed and offered me a job again. He wants me to go meet some girl named Tammy at an audition and insert myself into her life. He said if I do this one thing, he'll never ask me again. I'm tempted. I'll let you know when I make a decision. Love, Linus. Huh. Love, Linus. That's a weird way to end a journal entry. Okay, this is from a few days ago. You're missing some juicy stuff, Eloise. Okay, let's see. I'm writing again because I'm lost. I don't know who I am. I'm literally nothing other than Tammy's boyfriend. I don't have a job and I don't have a home, so that's the only role for me to play now. I'm trying my best, but she's either off working cases for the B-League, auditioning potential sidekicks, or helping out her brother. Uh Uh-oh, he's talking about me. Great. Max is here too, but he pretty much hates me. I try to stay out of his hair when Tammy's not home, but I'm starting to worry about him. He's even more depressed than me. Ever since he told me the nickname I gave him in college led to him having suicidal thoughts, I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I would totally hang out with him, but I'm afraid he'll think it's out of pity. What should I do? I would do anything for one of your big bear hugs right now. I miss you, Mom. Love, Linus. So this isn't a journal? He's writing letters to his mom? He's obviously not sending them, so does that mean she's... dead? Wouldn't you like to know? Fuck! Ow! Ow! Are you okay? This can't be the first time you smashed your antlers into the wall before. It's the first time doing it that hard! Well, you scratched the paint. Why are you smiling? Taking pleasure in my pain? Oh, yeah, I'm feeling really sympathetic for the guy going through all of my personal belongings. How long have you been here? Long enough to know that you've been reading my journal. Tell me, do you always talk to yourself this much when you're alone? I was talking to Eloise. Nice try. She flew out the window when I came back. Shouldn't you be at the gym? Shouldn't you be respecting my personal boundaries? Okay, I know this looks bad, but I was honestly just looking for my protein bars. Which I found, after you ate almost all of them... I saw this book and my curiosity got the best of me? First of all, those are my protein bars. Tammy bought them for me. She knows the snickerdoodles are my favorite. Uh, no, they're my favorite. When she got back from the store, she set them on the counter and said, Here's some more protein bars, you little b***. She was obviously talking to me. I'm pretty sure if my sister was calling anyone a little b***, it was me. Before we get into an argument about who's really the little b*** here, could you set my journal down? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thanks. Why did you come back so soon? I got your message, and I didn't have any money on me to buy you your vegetarian nuggets or whatever else. So I came back to get my wallet, which I now realize is also empty due to my dad disowning me. So if you need groceries, I would appreciate some money to do so. Not like I want to do anything for you right now. You were actually going to help me? Of course, why wouldn't I? You haven't before. Because you haven't asked. I was actually psyched you called me. Really? As you just read, I actually want to hang with you. But you didn't want me to think it was out of pity. Bingo. I don't think you pity me. If anything, I pity you. Ouch. And why's that? You lost everything. Your home, your money, your family... And you're stuck living with your new girlfriend and her freak show brother who's too afraid to leave the apartment. That kind of sucks. Well, it would suck less if I could trust you not to go through my stuff. I told you I was looking for my protein bars. My protein bars. Let's agree to disagree. Fine. So are you going to ask me? Ask you what? About my mom. Oh, it's not my place. But you want to, don't you? It doesn't matter what I want. (sighs) Max, I don't know how much you've read, but you obviously saw that I've been writing to my mom. Don't you want to know why? 
Is she... Is she still alive? Mostly. Kind of. I mean, yeah, she's alive. If she's not dead, why are you using a journal and not actually writing to her? Hold on. Okay, I put a field around the entire apartment. What's the force field for? I needed to make sure my dad couldn't use his powers to overhear this. I don't know if he knows, but I figured out how to prevent him from watching me when I was a teenager. What's so secret about your mom that your dad doesn't know? This isn't a journal, Max. It's my mom. What are you... what? My mom has powers too. Not really hero-worthy powers, but she used to go by the alias Bookworm when she was young and entertaining the idea of being a sidekick. She turns into books? No, no. She can travel into books. Her body disappears when she does it. We think it goes into another dimension, but her mind or soul or whatever you want to call it, it goes into books. She can interact with the characters and everything, rewriting parts of the story to make herself fit in. It's a psychic ability. She essentially generates an entire fictional world that she can live in. That actually sounds amazing. It redefines the phrase, get lost in a good book, right? Yeah. She used to hide in her books after arguing with my dad. Sally always said that her books made her a bad mother, and she thinks she loved her books more than us. That was actually how Sally's powers first manifested. She was so mad that she set our library on fire. I love that your family has its own library. It's where my mom's been hiding the last few years. When I was away at Rose Academy, she disappeared. Sally and dad have no idea where she is. But I found this journal under my pillow when I went home for winter break that year. She had inscribed this inside the front cover. Here, look. Linus, tell me your story and I'll never be alone. Love, Mom. I knew she had hidden herself in there to escape my dad. I don't know if he was going to kill her or what happened, but she needed to hide. If she ever comes back out, Dad'll see it, and he'll be able to find her. So, I write to her. To give her a world to live in. Wow, and I thought my family dynamic was complicated. You look like you have a million questions. I do. Go ahead. Okay, so are you like 100% sure your mom is in that book? What if you misread her note? She's in here. It's not even a question. Do you always carry it around with you? I haven't seen it before. No, I actually thought that would be more dangerous. So I kept it at our estate. She knows that Dad knows that she's smart enough not to hide in a book in her own library. So that's where I've kept her this whole time. When Dad kicked me out, I made sure to go get it. If I always had it on me, I was afraid he might get suspicious. Why do you think she went into hiding? You said something about your dad trying to kill her? I don't know. I was speculating. I have an idea, but it's probably stupid. It's not like I've had anyone else to talk to about this. Tammy doesn't know? No, you're the first. My mom is literally the most important person in my life, so I take this very seriously. Why did you tell me? You could have just said she was dead and you were writing her letters because you were sad. That's how it feels sometimes. I don't know, Max. I feel like we're kind of in the same boat right now. And I told you because... Maybe I need you to trust me right now. I can keep a secret, but you'll have to tell Tammy sooner than later. I know. (sighs) I know. Would you have told me if I hadn't found the journal? Definitely not. But you did, and it feels right. I don't know. Should I be regretting this? No, 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 no. Um, no. Don't worry. I've got your back. Okay. Good. So, you said you had a stupid idea about why your mom turned into a book. Oh, we're going there. Okay. What is it? Mom's gone into every genre, including sci-fi, true crime, autobiographies, and cookbooks, which she said was really weird. She would always leave them feeling full, even though she couldn't eat while she was in them. And? She joined a book club, and they read a lot of romance novels. I'm thinking that my dad found out and got jealous. Like, maybe she was having an affair with some guy in a romance novel. Oh god, that's so dumb. Especially hearing it out loud for the first time. No, no. This is good. That makes a lot of sense. I take it their marriage wasn't great? I'm pretty sure she only stuck around for me. 
Sally was a sociopath from infancy, and Dad's, well, you know, evil supervillain. When I went off to school, I think she was in her books more than she was out of them. I wonder if her book club read Fifty Shades of Grey. Ugh, gross. Please don't make me think about that. Sorry. Ow! Ugh, come on! Are you okay? Sorry, I got a let cramp from sitting funny and I just kind of reacted. Have you been doing that a lot? What, forgetting how big my antlers are and bashing them into the walls? I haven't heard you crashing around too much since I moved in. Yeah, well, your soundproof force fields work both ways. That makes sense. Max, are you okay? No. No, I am not. Do you want me to make some pliable force fields to go around your rack? They'll act like pillows, kind of, to soften the blow. I'd have to redo them every 12 hours or so, but it might help. You would do that for me? Of course. Why does everyone think I'm some selfish jerk? I blame your track record. I've never seen you be kind to anyone until you met Tammy. That can't be true. Nope. Totally true. You only saw me around my bros. It's a whole macho thing. We get carried away. I'm a guy too, or did you forget? Yeah, but you're not like... you know. Oh, no. Please tell me what I'm not. Max, I'm not trying to be mean. You're nicer than most guys, and like... sweeter? More in touch with your emotions? I'm saying this wrong. Linus, am I the first gay person you've ever known? No, I've met other gay guys, but you're like... my first gay friend. I'm... I'm your friend? Dude, of course you're my friend. Since when? Are you forgetting about the time I went against my family to try to rescue you? You only wanted to help me because you're dating my sister. Oh my god. I would have tried to save you no matter what. If I'd never met Tammy, and I saw you in that shipping container, I would have done the same thing. This is what I've been trying to tell you. Despite the act I got used to putting on, I'm not a villain. I'm not my dad. I never said you were. Well, that's how you've been treating me. No, I haven't. Okay, well, yeah. Maybe I have. Can we start fresh? Forget the Academy? For Tammy's sake? No, Maxie. For us. You had me until you called me Maxie. We're not there yet. I'll get you there eventually. Now, other than your antlers, tell me what's bothering you. Don't you have to go to the gym? Hey, this body can take a day off. Did you really just flex? I'm not apologizing for it. I wish I could go to the gym, or the store, or, you know, like, anywhere. Then why haven't you? Look at me. That sounds like an excuse. I can't just cover these things up with a hat or an umbrella. I can't even fit in a car. Other than a huge van or the subway, I can only travel on foot. What about a motorcycle? Do I seem like a motorcycle person to you? Motor scooter, skateboard, e-bike, Segway? Look at the big picture. I'll never have privacy again. What about when your guy comes back? Can't he just make you invisible? I... I can't rely on someone else's powers to function as a human. Can you even be considered human anymore? I think so, of course. Wait, am I? And what's so bad about not having any privacy? Have you ever seen the hero tuber Blue Moon? He has a bajillion followers, and everyone knows about his powers. But he doesn't wear a costume or anything. Unless you count the assless chaps. I think he's wearing a romper thing now with a butt flap. Like a onesie for an adult. Nice. I don't want to be a social media gimmick. I just want to live my life and put on my mask and go to work. Two separate lives. Well, that's not going to happen. So you need to pivot. Do you think I wanted to leave home? I barely know how to use a microwave. I'm not suited for taking care of myself. I know. Last time you tried to pop popcorn, I thought the whole building was going to burn down. Hey, I thought the popcorn button would work. The popcorn button never works. Then why is it there? Hey, why don't you just put on your costume? What? Why? You know, to leave the apartment. Put on your mask, put on your costume, and go do your thing. What superheroes go grocery shopping in costume? Come on. Hey, it was just an idea. Want me to pretend to be a criminal? I can run somewhere and you can chase me, so no one thinks twice about why you're out and about. That's dumb. I mean, I think it would work, but it's dumb. 
you totally want to do it, don't you? The park isn't that far away. It's pretty chilly today, so it won't be busy. Would you really do that for me? Sure. The cardio will make up for my lost gym time. I wouldn't need to do it too often, just every once in a while until I can figure out a new job. I might have to move to a more rural area or sidekick for a more obscure hero, but it's possible, right? At least until Elijah comes back. If he comes back. He'll be fine. That robot chick is with him, right? She looks like she can protect herself. Sophia is not a robot. But yeah, she's the smartest person I've ever met. And with her new smashy powers, she might be fine. Even if Elijah survives and comes back, he might not want to be with me. I mean, calling him my boyfriend was hasty. We barely know each other. You really miss him, don't you? Yeah, I do. Have you ever just met someone that makes you feel good? Like you feel safe and comfortable and like you're home when you're near them? Yeah, I have. Are you thinking about Tam? No. Well, a little, but I'm mostly thinking about my mom. Ah. It must be hard to have her right there with you, but not be able to see her or talk to her. Writing is better than nothing. I saw you wrote about missing her hugs. When I was little, she used to pretend to be a bear and growl and everything, and she'd say she was my mama bear and wrap me up in a huge bear hug. Then she would she would tickle me until we both laughed so hard we'd cry. I'm... I'm sorry. It's okay. I'll figure out a way to get her out of this book and protect her from my dad. Um, Linus, can you feel that too? Feel what? The book. It's like humming with energy. I don't feel anything. It's my ability. It's like when I talk to animals, but different? I'm not sure how. Can I hold the book again? Yeah, yeah. Here. Thanks. Are you doing that? I don't think so. What's happening? Let me see. Ow! Sorry, I didn't mean to poke you. F*** antlers. There's writing appearing. It's... Oh, wow. What does it say? It's addressed to me. It's from your mom. Seriously? Yeah. Read it. I... Read it! Okay, okay. It says... Hi, Max. Thank you for being there for my son. It means more to him than you realize. He's always wanted a brother, so I'm happy you're here. You will need to be there for each other to survive what's coming next. Tell him he is my heart, and I love him more than mama bears love their cubs. Max, is... Is that everything? (sighs) There's one more thing. Watch your eyes. What? Why? Oh, no, Max, you don't need to... This hugs from your mom. You're not terrible at this. Do you want me to make the bear sounds? Please don't ruin the moment. (laughs) I'm not tickling you. Okay, you can let go now. Sorry, I just realized how long it's been since I've held someone like that. You know, Tammy's not exactly a hugger. Is it possible that we don't tell her about this? Tell her about what? (laughs) Thanks, Maxie. Sorry, Max. You can call me whatever you want. Is your mom telling the truth? Have you always wanted a brother? If you had a sister like mine, wouldn't you want a brother too? That's valid. But yeah, she's not wrong. Other than my mom, being with you and Tammy is what I always imagined a family would feel like. You call me out for being, you know... A privileged brat? There you go. The annoying little brother I never thought I needed. You're like three months older than me. Whatever, you're stuck with me now. I still hate you a little. But you'll learn to love me a little too. If we live long enough for that. Why would you... Oh, right. What my mom said. We're going to need each other to survive what's coming next. What do you think that means? I could just ask her, but she probably won't answer. She's selective when she responds. What do you mean? This isn't the first time she's written to someone? It's the first time she's written back to someone other than me. She writes back to me all the time, even though it's never very deep. She doesn't talk about dad or anything bad, and she keeps it short. I'm assuming it takes a lot of her concentration. 
Why didn't I see any of her writing when I was flipping through the journal? The ink fades away after I read it. I probably should have mentioned her writing back earlier. Maybe. Whatever. I kind of thought I was the one causing it, so I felt special for a second. Yeah, no. Sorry, well, it, it was special that you could sense her writing. Have your powers ever done that before? It's always just been animals, never inanimate objects. Or people trapped inside of inanimate objects. Honestly, it might not even be that power. That seems convenient. Are you complaining? No, it was nice of her to send me a hug through you, even if you almost gouged my eyes out with one of your pokey deer spikes. Hey, I was just the messenger. I know. So now what? I think we're gonna have to tell Tammy everything. Not everything. If she hears you're a better hugger than her, she might get jealous. Har har har, you're hilarious. Hey, hasn't Tam mentioned a hen she named Bear Hug before? Oh, that was thug, not hug. And wrong kind of bear. I think he was a nudist. Oh, I get it. Bear, thug. Ew, gross. Hey, I wonder why my mom didn't mention Tammy. Why would she talk about me and you, but not her? I have no idea. Maybe because we're the only two people here right now? Perhaps. We can talk about it in the park if you want. I need to get out of here. Like, now. Want me to put on a ski mask and bring one of Tammy's bags? You can pretend I'm a purse snatcher when you chase me. Uh, no thanks. I have a better idea. Okay. Hold on one second. Did you just knock down one of the paintings in the hall? Yeah, but it was one of the ugly ones anyway. Okay, I got him. Ta-da! Sunglasses? Yeah, no one will know who I am if I wear sunglasses. What if they recognize me, though? People actually know me. They'll think you're cool hanging out with a deer guy. Uh, okay. Are you sure about this? I know you've been on the verge of a panic attack for a while. If we might die soon, I don't want to spend my last days cooped up in a tiny apartment scraping the paint off the walls with my antlers. That's not happening. Okay, let's do it. Hey, are all your force fields always translucent? Like, can you make them opaque so people can't see through them? Yeah, I can make them solid colors or patterns. Who doesn't love a good chevron? Can you make them mirrored? Like, reflective? Um, I've never tried. Because if you can do that, you can probably make them bend light. Right? What are you talking about? What if you can make us invisible in your force field? Are you second-guessing the sunglasses? Uh, no, these are cool. Um, I don't know. I've always worried more about the density and pliability of my fields, and how much air can pass through them, or if they're soundproof. I've made them solid so no one can see inside, but I've never made them invisible before. Eh, it's just a thought. Maybe you can practice in the park? I don't see why not. It's worth a shot. Okay, I have my keys and my phone. I think I'm good to go. You're practically bouncing. Sorry, I feel like I've been in lockdown forever. All right, Maxie, after you. Ow, f***ing sh- ah. There's a doorway there. Okay, let's try that again. Ow, what was that for? Whoops, I forgot to take down the force field around the apartment, so no mention of my mom again until we put up another one of these, okay? Yeah, no, of course. Let's try this doorway thing again. Third time's the charm. I'm never going to get used to these antlers. Thank God for the open floor plan here. Can you fit in the elevator? I don't think so. Okay, to the stairs. In this episode of Second Fiddles, Max is voiced by Matt Johnson, Linus is voiced by Alex Sinacropi, and McGuffin is voiced by John Pupo. All the production and writing and all that stuff is done by Matt Johnson, music by Pete Johnson, no relation. Have a great day and thanks for listening.